Thank you so much for coming. Uh, the BBC's The Last Kingdom is a rollicking historical drama based on novels by Bernard Cornwell, which follows one young man, Utrecht, as he is torn between a, a war between the Saxons and the Danes, the birth of what would become England. Uh, now let's meet some of the stars of the show. Will you please welcome Runa Temte. <laughs> David Dawson. And Alexander Draymond. Welcome, gents. Hello. How are we all? Very well. Good. 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 Uh, has everyone here been watching The Last Kingdom? Okay. Good, good, good. Good to know. Uh, because we're on episode three in this country, episode five in the States, it could be a little bit confusing at times just to keep track of where we are. But just in case anyone hasn't seen it, and for anyone who's listening to the podcast who hasn't seen the show, can you talk about your characters, who you play? Let's start with you, Alexander. Right, I play Uhtred, Uhtred of Bourbon Burr sometimes known as Uhtred Ragnarsson, who, <laughs> who uh, is born a Saxon, gets raised as a Dane after he's orphaned by the Danes, and eventually becomes the leader of <laughs> Alfred's armies. Fair enough. And Alfred is played by David. Who is Alfred? David? Hello. Hello. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, yeah, I play King Alfred. Um, who is uh, the physically frail but fiercely intelligent uh, weirdo who ends up with this vision of uh, trying to create England. And uh, Aruna, who do you play? Yes, I play uh, Abba, or Uba. I'm the main warrior, the chieftain. Uh, I'm sort of the leader of the gang coming over for Denmark. And owner of a taxi company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone seen my tattoo? What is it? Yes? It's actually a combination of a snake and maybe a small dragon, is it? Something like that. Cool. So uh, we do some fighting. That's my job, actually. And uh, <laughs> it's a cool job. Is that what the character was described as when you first heard about the character and said it's no. just a man who fights. No, when I first read the script, it said this character is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> and I said, that, that's good. I have to make him into a uh, um, sort of more three-dimensional dim character. And I think that was the big challenge because, you know, villains often, they go in one direction, either you die or you do not die. So, yeah, I think it was great and... Uh, uh, basically, have you seen first, to second, third episodes? Yeah? Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Abba is bonkers, uh, but is also a real figure. He, he actually existed, as did Alfred the Great, obviously. Uh, did you do a lot of research into your characters before you took this, this on? Let's start with you, Runa, and then and David. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure if... I mean, you have characters in, in this time from this history that's called Uber, but I'm not quite sure if uh, he was actually, he had that sort of um, position that he has in the Last Kingdom. And we can discuss this afterwards, but uh, there, there was a Viking called Uber for sure. And uh, I trained for about six months with real Vikings in Norway. I remember the first. Uh, fighting session and I said okay let's pretend and they, they said we do not pretend <laughs> so uh, that was very good six months with them uh, fighting a lot with axe and we didn't have any choreography so in the end of the six months we were actually fighting um, so that was good preparation R read a lot uh, from Norse uh, mythology uh, Hova Mol, as uh, some of you might know, uh, and of course, uh, not of course, but I'm Norwegian and it's kind of in my DNA to do the Viking stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and David, you play obviously Alfred, who becomes king. Uh, did you work experience kings? Did you go on internship programs with 
with monarchs. How do you how do you research this role? Um, I thought I thought it was amazing that it's um, a period of history that we know very little about. We're not really taught about it at school an awful lot, and yet it was this incredible moment when uh, England almost never was, and um, that this one man had this incredible vision, it, and it's a an amazing moment in in history. Uh, but so th I researched like the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles and Brother Asa, who you'll meet soon, uh, wrote an awful lot about Alfred's life. And then the books, I, I really fell in love with the books and always went back to them to really find those little nuance of details about um, who Alfred really was, yeah. And, uh, and Alexander, uh, Uhtred is uh, a, a creation by Bernard Cornwell. So he, did he you do a little creation, research? But he's, yeah. he's actually... Yeah. Uh, Part of, of Bernard's family, he he was a, a, a character who existed about two uh, two to three hundred years after the story is set. So he's a fictional character in the story. Yes. So did you do a lot of research? Did you sit down with Bernard Cornwell himself? Well, what, what did you I, do? I had his books, which were all the research I needed, handed to me on a silver platter, which <laughs> was brilliant. Got a lot out of the books, and then you know, of course, I, I also did the, the the fight training, the horse riding, and and uh, and a lot of it came on set as well because we we were always shooting on location, and even when we were inside, it was freezing cold, and you can see the breath in many of the scenes. All that is real, so I think I just got a lot from from being there and being in the moment. You know, did you have six months of fight training? With Vikings, like. I, I didn't need six months. <laughs> <laughs> he was—he was a bold right, claim. I, he was so fit already, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy did that. <laughs> <laughs> How much training did you do with the fight, with the fight stuff, with the with we, stunts? We, sword we didn't, work. We didn't actually do that much. I only started one week before we started shooting. One week. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, but true. Yeah, true. Wow. Absolutely. So yeah. did you know it already or was it just Well, I, I, just I'd done up? lots of different martial arts before but but never never with a heavy sort of <laughs> medieval sword yeah. or pre-medieval sword. Um, so that was new, but I think just the enjoying it so much made it a lot easier, you know. So how did this uh, show come about for you all? How did you get involved in the first place? I actually self-taped for it. Um, it sounds like a like a homemade porn, but it's actually when you <laughs> when you uh, put yourself on tape for a casting director who's in a different country, mm -hmm. or when they're too lazy to see people in person, <laughs> <laughs> which was it here? <laughs> which it, it, it was the different country. I, I okay, was okay. I was at home in the states, and oh. and uh, it was being cast out of the UK. So mm -hmm. I did a couple of self tapes, sent those in, and then I I did a screen test in LA, and then I flew over to London for a final screen test with Emily. And it took quite a while. I think I started in April, and I finally got an answer in, in September. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, Nick Murphy, who directed the first two episodes, and was involved, I think, throughout the whole of the show as well. Oh, heavily. He, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he absolutely set the pace, and um, he came up with the concept of, of, shooting, of shooting almost documentary style. So uh, you're very much in the action all the time, and that was that was uh, mostly, if not all, Nick Murphy's idea, you know. And and uh, and he's certainly the one who got me involved. He's the one who championed me. Yes, he yeah. he said that um, he tweeted actually that he knew the second you walked into the room. Well, I'm very grateful to him. <laughs> Do you know the second you walk into the room that he knew the second you walked into? There the was room no room. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a tape. Just a tape. Okay. Uh, and David, how did you get involved? Um, for me, it was one of those, that very rarely um, do you read a script when a character really, really um, sings out to you. And with Alfred, I knew that I'd fight tooth and nail to, to play this man. Because I think as an actor, you, um, a lot of the stories you're involved with, it's a kind of a relationship-based or family-based or uh, the main problems or objectives are to do with the town or a community. And this man, his main objective is to unite a kingdom and create England. And I found that incred incredible. And so I, I met Nick and Chrissy about three, three times. Okay. Yeah. Is that nerve-wracking for an actor as you go through auditions and you, you have one meeting? 
Then you have a second meeting. You think, oh, I could get this. And then the third meeting comes around. At that point, what, what are the nerves like? Are they? Yeah, it's hard because you want it more and more yeah. as it goes along. Yeah. Yeah. But you get it, which is good. And, uh, and Runa, how did you get involved? I uh, also did a self tape. Uh, and um, it's quite funny because um, in Norway, a lot of people say, oh, yes, Runa. I used to have a big beard like this, and I said, oh, Runa, that's fantastic, you're perfect. You were perfect for this role. And I said, yes, but actually when I did uh, the casting, I didn't have, any, I didn't have a beard as well, uh, at all. That's quite funny, because uh, Nick, he didn't say, he said the same thing to me, actually. He knew it was me the, f the minute he saw me on the, on the tape. Um, and um, it was good, and then I read the script, I love the script. I think that's one of the reasons I became an actor, is to tell stories. And I think this is a fantastic story to be told. And I think in the way it's being told is just amazing. So um, it's very well written. And that from there on, it was just try to do my best. And I had to wait about, I think, one and a half months from my first self-tape to the second because the first was really trying to be a bad guy, and then feedback was, oh yes, that's really good, but now we want to see if this character can have some humor. And Runa has no humor. Exactly. <laughs> so so another six months of training on that. Exactly, so I thought, <laughs> that's gonna be hard. So I, I knew I had a great chance to get the part, but it took, uh, yeah, you took, took a while and afterwards I learned that actually Nick Murphy he went on holiday so while I was sort of you know so nervous for that time he was actually somewhere having fun in the sun <laughs> you know when when I first met Runa it was uh, it was at the, uh, the costume department in London and I walked into the room and I saw Runa in his boxer shorts <laughs> and, and the Viking top and he was towering over me with his big beard and his blonde hair and he looked so perfect for this part and Thank then you. yeah oh it, it, I'll never forget that moment it's quite emotional <laughs> I talk about it with my girlfriend at night and she's shut up about it but, but uh, suddenly this uh, realization came into my head that I was gonna have to fight him <laughs> in the middle of the uh, <laughs> show and that was less funny. But Did that take more than a week's training to prepare for <laughs> the fight? Because you are on a collision course, we won't give anything away, but that, that will happen at some point. The two of you will fight. Maybe tonight. Oh, maybe tonight. <laughs> maybe right here on this stage. Um, we have a clip now from the show. We have a couple of clips, actually. Uh, and this one is uh, a scene which shows Alfred and Utrecht uh, having a bit of a discussion. Let's take a look. Well, maybe not so much of a discussion, more of a monologue, but, <laughs> but, but nevertheless, the, the relationship between uh, uh, Alfred and Utrecht is very, very important. It's, it's the, the core, the heart of the show, wouldn't you say? Is that something that you, you, you agree with? Yeah, it was described to us when I got it as a bit of a, bit of a love story, really. Not, not broke back style, but yeah. <laughs> well, it could be, you never know. Uh, no, um, yeah, it's the story of these two men, and that they need each other uh, desperately to um, get their own objectives, and yet at the same time, at least at the beginning, they can't stand each other. And um, I can't wait for you to see how that relationship deepens and, and develops between the two men. I think it's the opposite attract thing. Alfred is very analytical, and uh, he's an intellectual, and Utrecht is the complete opposite. He's a man of of action, a man of impulse. Yeah, absolutely, and, and Uhtred is very fascinated by Alfred because of, of the way he thinks and how out of the box he is, and, and I think at that time it was very unusual to have a king who was not a fighter. Not that, that Alfred didn't fight at all, but, but he was mainly a, a politician, a strategist, and for Uhtred that, that was completely unheard of, and that first meeting when Uhtred first meets Alfred, he's, he's not really impressed by him just because of his, his physicality and, and, and demeanor and the, the, the frailty. And in one scene, Alfred just kills Uhtred and completely shuts him up. 
and I think that sets the pace. And and for me as an actor, it really helped to uh, to have David play Alfred because uh, David is such a a, a detailed, um, brilliant actor who who knows his stuff so well that you you know you'll always be safe and you can you can try out stuff and you know he'll be there to to bounce back at you and and to be able to admire him as, as a person and as an actor really helped me um, to to admire Alfred in the story. Mm. Yeah. Was there a, a long rehearsal process? I mean, you had a week uh, to learn fights, fighting and, and swords, the swords play, but in terms of your relationship with, with Alfred, with David, was that something you worked on? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we shared a bed for about a week. <laughs> 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 that was nice, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I was going to ask about when you first met him. If you saw Runa in his boxer shorts, when was the first time? <laughs> it's, it's, you wait. There's five episodes to go. Lots is going to happen. <laughs> it can go anywhere. Uh, let's take a look at another clip now. Um, this one uh, features uh, Oba. Uh, so we see Runa in all his glory. Not his boxer shorts, but his glory. Uh, and this one has special guest star Jason Fleming. Let's take a look. We'll never know what happens um, <laughs> in that sequence. Um, that illustrates to me, though, uh, something about the show that is very surprising. Uh, it's very gritty, it's very bloody, it's very serious, but it also has this wonderful streak of black humor running all the way through. Uh, and Runa, a lot of that comes from, from Uba, from your character. Can you talk about that? I mean, was that something Nick uh, Murphy outlined to you, that this would be a show that would, that would be funny as well? I think... It was in Nick Murphy's vision from day one, uh, and it was all also very much in the script. Um, and as you remember, Earl Rangner, yeah, great sense of humor as well. Um, and I think it brings something, another dim uh, dimension to this kind of show that uh, we need, because it's a lot, a um, lot of, it is very dark and it's a lot of powerful stuff with violence and situations. So, I've, of course, Nick gave us a lot of um, freedom so we can work around what we had. We found some, um, some stuff there, but I think it was already there in the script, a lot of it. Yeah, I think Stephen Butcher's script was, was very layered and a lot of the jokes that went there weren't really apparent until you saw it on the screen. And I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm discovering the episodes as we go along. I haven't seen the whole show, and and as we go along, I, I you know, sometimes I, I, I watch it with family members and watch it again, and then on a second tape, uh, second take, I, I, I see or discover a new joke that wasn't in there before, and. Uh, and as you said, yeah, Nick really encouraged improvisation and just spontaneous moments. He was really thriving on that, and it was really liberating for us as actors. And David, is that something that you found as well? Alfred's quite a serious man, but there are moments when... Uh, there's a moment where he struggles, for example, with his temptation with his mistress, which I thought was very, very funny. Is it, uh, as an actor, do you revel in finding moments like that for your characters? Yeah, there was a, a, a section in the book where... You, where um, Utrecht says, Alfred understands everything except a joke. And I really, I love that. that he doesn't know the situation's funny, but yeah, yeah. Um, I love his wife. I think she's really funny. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so did you film the entire show as, as one giant series, or did you film episode to episode? Or was it all filmed back to back? We were always filmed two episodes as, at a time. Two episodes so at a time. So we had four blocks of two episodes. Yeah. And where did you film? You filmed out in? In Hungary, in Hungary. Budapest mainly. Okay. Some, some scenes were shot in Wales. All the okay. beach scenes were in Wales. And, uh, and the Viking ships so were in Denmark, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Denmark. Yeah. <laughs> so all over the place. Uh, what was the experience like of filming out in Hungary? It looks cold. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was freezing during the winter and really freezing and there were scenes especially the scenes where when we were on horseback but we weren't really going anywhere when we were just maybe leaving the city for the battle you remember that when we when we when we left for battle and the resets because we had so many so many actors and so many extras involved resetting the scene for each new take would just take ages and you'd be sitting on a horse immobile and at night I would come back and and take a one hour shower and still not be warm and be really? so frozen to the bone and then Hungary is a, a sort of a 
country of extremes because in summer it can get extremely hot. I literally have a picture on my phone of a dashboard of a car where it says 56 degrees Celsius. <laughs> oh my God. And <clears throat> nobody believes me when I show it to people, but we were shooting in that heat in furs. And yeah, that, that was something. I, I drank all day and never had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and David and Runa, what, what was that experience like for you filming out there in Hungary? Well, the, the countryside is really actually looks very much like England, which was brilliant. And um, a lot of the sets are... Um, were, were, Winchester was uh, built with this, this amazing thatched roofed um, city and the palace was a 3D working set, which was in incredible for us. And when it rained, the, uh, the palace would flood, as I suppose it would. And you'd be freezing cold in so inside as much as you would be on the battlefield. So, so as king, did you know that set inside out? Could you walk around your palace and know every nook, every cranny? Yeah. Own it all? The real challenge is to leave one room uh -huh. and then make the connection with a different set uh -huh. that's maybe 50 kilometers somewhere else and know or that that corridor country. comes out at that spot because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the trick. But it, it was great being out there. I mean, very professional um, crew and very friendly and um, it was all great because they in Hungary in these days, they get a lot of productions filming out there, like Marco Polo, for example, the, uh, the, the second season. So everything is very, you know, very professional, and we had a great time out there. I think something that I really enjoyed that was the, uh, um, you know, the connection with, with the, uh, fellow, my fellow actors. I mean, it was great. And I think actually you can see some of this in, in, in the scenes that we had. We had so much fun. I can't say it was fun taking out Jason Fleming, the lovely man and the great <laughs> actor. But we had this sort of, we want to make this good. We, wanna, we want it to happen. And I think that was sort of, it's quite unique, you know, um, to actually have that spirit. And we had a really strong connection with the crew. It, it, it was a long shoot for seven months. We, we worked together day in, day out, and those guys really became a little bit of a family. And, and I mean, I anyway, I really miss them. And, and I think for me, they really did the show because they were so, so hardworking and so positive all the time, whatever happened. Um, and it wasn't always easy, but they, they always made it great. So this is really a, a sort of key experience in, in your lives as actors, this, this, this show. Yes, I, I, for me it was a great experience. I saw the first uh, scene on the first episode I was in and I started to cry because I thought, you know, I, it was fantastic to see it up there, all the creative people actually done all that work so we can go out and tell this story. And it's, it was incredible. And uh, of course, so many people turning up today or, and I've been stopped, you know, walking down around London today uh, people asking, "Where's your tattoo?" And you know, it's, uh, <laughs> and, uh, it, it's it's amazing. I mean, um, so I think it shows that um, uh, there's something there's something in this material that um, uh, has to be told, and it's been told in a great way. And I think it will be a great show to watch. So it's a strange feeling because we all worked on it for for so long, and got a very close, and all cast and crew, and really cared about it, and now we have to let it go and it becomes yours and that's why it means an awful lot to me that all, everybody came here today because you know we really want people to love the show as much as we loved making it so yeah absolutely intriguing stuff okay let's uh, let's take some questions now from the audience if you have any questions for the guys then put your hands up and we've got a roving microphone i think there's a lady here right here in the front row we'll get a roving microphone to you right now there we go my name's Mary McKenzie. Uh, I've read all the books. I'm on book nine. I was absolutely madly in love with you, Tread. <laughs> and not, not anymore now that you've seen the show. Well, you must have had an awful lot of criticism because you're not blonde, are you? Have you? I, I, if, if it makes you feel better, I was blonde when I was about this tall. Yeah, that makes me feel <laughs> a whole lot better. The, the other thing I would ask, when will you name the sword? Because so far it's not... The sword's not been named, nor, nor your dagger. Well, will you name that? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's very much in our minds on set anyway. Um, I can't remember on which episode it gets named or if I actually voice it, but 
we're very aware of it while we're shooting. Everybody says, we're serpent breath. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't, you know, I've, I've shot it a while ago, so I can't tell you right now when Wait, the name will actually be pronounced. Okay, J the other thing was, um, could you if you if you remember in the in the first uh, first episode when Uhtred is still a little, uh, a little boy, uh -huh. um, when he when he stabs our Ragnar in the leg, he has a tiny dagger. The, yes, it's it's a small dagger, and and young Ragnar. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Carry on. Um, uh, he he has a small dagger, and young Ragnar uh, refers to it as as a wasp's thing, that's and that's right. that's when the when the small one gets named. Yeah. Uh, and I just wondered, uh, will you be meeting Steepa in the next episodes, and will that duel uh, be happening? Uh, I don't know. Can I say that? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure if you can. Yeah, so we, we've got a sneak peek, and maybe let's, let's leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, thank you. Uh, any other questions? There's lots of questions. Here's the gentleman here in the second row. We'll get the microphone to you, sir. There you go. Hi, everyone. I uh, just want to say I really love the show, first of all. Um, Uhtred's regular kind of hissy fits. How much fun have you had playing that? Because he's, he's, he's an immature guy, isn't he? Th th those were the best moments. What, what, what's the end of your question? I didn't hear that. How much have you enjoyed that? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the... I, I said that before. I think the, the most fun I've had is the fact that Uhtred can be a real... You said I can say as well. Yeah, right? of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a real arsehole, Uhtred, sometimes. <laughs> and, and, he, and it gets worse. And Alfred would agree problems. with that. Yeah, 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 but so, so are you. I mean, Alfred. <laughs> um, has anyone in public called you arsling to your face? My girlfriend does, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, please. I think so. Uber calls him weasel shit. Weasel and, shit. And turd. And turd, and, yeah. yeah. Weasel shit and turd. We're all learning something today. Uh, yes, please. It's all very anal <laughs> for Uhtred, isn't it? <laughs> I wanted to know, this is a very long... If this were a feature film, you'd be there all day. And I was just thinking, how did you hold the narrative together? Because it's plain that uh, Nick Murphy had it all in his head. Did he well, then you're, set you're, you're you up? You're cutting out a little bit. Sorry, sorry can you just, can you just repeat the question? Sorry. Oh, sorry okay. Um, how did you hold it all in your head? Did Nick Murphy sit you down at the beginning of the day and say, right, we're at episode so-and-so, we've got to develop what happened before? Or how did you do it? Is, is this a question for me or it's for all three, I guess? Yeah. It's a question for everybody. I, I, think, I think all of that is in the preparation, really, because you, you know... You're always shooting two episodes at a time, and and for each scene, you have to determine where in the story the scene is going to happen. You have to know what happened just before, even if you shot it weeks ago, or, or if you haven't shot it at all. Um, and you have to know what comes after, so that you can you can make a a clean segue from scene to scene in the finished product. So uh, for me, it's in the preparation mainly. I draw out a big map, a big long map of uh, the narrative, so I know. If on Tuesday we're doing the end of Ep 2, but on Wednesday we're doing the beginning of Ep 1, you know, that type of thing. Really? So if you walk into your dressing room, it lo looks like a madman's uh, <laughs> cave, in a way. It's very Alfred, <laughs> actually. You know, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 It's, um, what is, you can see also the, uh, uh, Nick worked very much together with his uh, DOP, Chess Bane. You can see how it's shot, you know? It's very contemporary. So a uh, jazz, he could have his camera on his shoulders for uh, his shoulder for 12 minutes. Um, so actually, they will have scenes like the one you saw with the arrows. It will run and run, and and doing this for the camera, this is not usual. Uh, it's not in the theater we do that all the time, but for the camera, you usually you know do one scene, then you do the next this angle, this angle, but it, will act it would run the whole scene, and it was a long scene, and Jazz was going there with the camera, and what was really, really interesting that he said on the, uh, I think it was the first day, he said, come on, you can do whatever you want, because the camera will be there with you, the camera will see you, and this is uh, extraordinary for an actor to, to hear that on a film set. Yeah, the it's camera, real team, I you know? Then you, have, then you have Simon, who's the focus puller, and, and uh, 
for those of you who don't know, you, you, you always need somebody who's going to keep the image in focus. And that's okay if you've rehearsed the scene before and he knows exactly at what point in the scene you're going to arrive at a certain spot. But the way we were shooting, he never knew what was going to happen next. And he's, he always managed to keep us in focus. And, and that's quite an achievement. And, and that's just you know one little piece of the, of the whole puzzle. There were so many people involved. It's real, real teamwork. You know? What was the uh, experience like for you as actors uh, when you go from one director to another? So Nick directs the first two episodes, and he sets up the tone of the world, and he sets up the tone of the series, then other directors come on, at which point you know your characters perhaps better than the new directors. Well, that's the crazy thing. Yeah, ev everybody, everybody stays the same and works out a, a, a way of working together and, and starts knowing each other, and many things happen without even talking about them because you, you know how, how you think or how, you, how the other person thinks, and then suddenly the head of the whole operation is the one that gets changed and everybody has to readapt. So it's, it, it can be quite challenging at the beginning, but also in a good way because you learn from each new director and each new director brings something different to uh, the series. Um, so it keeps it fresh. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, you adapt to a new rhythm, and it, which is good because you, don't, um, you never get settled or feel safe. You're constantly having to adapt to a new leader's rhythm, how they work. And, Keeps us on our toes, I think. Mm. Uh, Runa, how was that? Yeah, I I like to work with the different people, obviously, but um, it's also because with my character Uber, um, I got a lot of freedom from Nick Murphy, the first director, and as you could see, um, he's very expressive, and and uh, a lot of scenes I would um, I would do something just there and then, you know. And as Alexander some, sometimes experienced, I would sort of hit him or I would actually spit in his face. And uh, not all directors like that. And they wanted to say, okay, okay, Runa, we've seen enough of that now. Now you stand over there, the camera is there, and you say your line like that. And yeah, I'm used to doing that, so it's not a big problem for me. But then I sort of had developed my character in a certain way. And I sort of had to try to adopt that. But um, it was... It went fine. I worked with three different uh, directors, and I think we all um, found a way um, of working together. So, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, any other questions uh, from the floor? Yes, please. There's a gentleman here on, by the table, and then a lady behind him. I just say a word uh, as a, uh, your audience, basically. And I've never been liked. Game of Thrones, too distant from me, too far away. But you, listening to you today, speak right to here because I'm a Cumbrian and I come from North Umbria and I've lived that life that you talk about on the very land where the Danes landed and that was round Otterburn. And just after the war, I was a lieutenant in the Cumbrian Yeomanry. And our shooting, our rangers, were on, in Otterburn. The colonel of the regiment owned a large castle just north of Carlisle where I was born. He fought in that battle that you're describing two centuries after the incidents. And he was still the colonel of the regiment which I was a young officer in and Otterburn was our rangers, and I watched sheep being blown to bits through my binoculars. So when you describe the horror, I'm afraid the guilt in me of what I was doing at that time, which as a very young man did not realize, speaks so deep down that it, <laughs> I owe you a great deal. That's, all that's, that's the biggest compliment that we can receive really. Yeah, that's very moving. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. There's a, a lady behind. Thank you. And then a lady right at the back. Hello. Um, just wanted to say the show is great. It's really compelling. And uh, I had a question for Alex. It was about um, Uhtred. As a viewer, I'm trying to work out whether Uhtred is kind of absolutely selfish character or whether he's driven by his sense of injustice so i just wondered if you had any 
input on that? Well, since, since um, I mean, one of the reasons why I am in, in love with the story and, and with the way that Stephen Butcher adapted it is that there's a real arc to every character and every character becomes, uh, unfolds um, as we go along and, and we learn more about him. And uh, there's definitely uh, more to Uhtred than the selfishness and, and, and uh, that'll become clearer in the next couple of episodes. Uh, actually four onwards yeah thank you there was a lady right at the back okay uh, my name is Katrina Hai I'm actually from South Africa and we don't have a lot of digital like ADSL in South Africa so to be able to watch the show here living here now is amazing I just love it it's one of the benefits of the UK um, one of the things which I've recently realized is that there's a lot of digital marketing I'm in marketing I work for Vodafone and I don't find your characters on Twitter or even some, especially Alexander, your personal profile. How do the producers engage with their audience, such as the people here, to drive the personal characters more into the social media, which is a core platform of growth for any brand, personal character or TV series? Well, The, the Last Kingdom has a Twitter account and they are tweeting. I'm, I'm not uh, on social media for personal reasons. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the Last Kingdom is on, on Twitter, and I think you are, aren't you? Are you not? No? I mean, some, some, of, the, some of the actors in the show are on Twitter. Emily Cox, for example, is on Twitter. Nick Murphy, the director of the, two, the, the first two episodes, is on Twitter. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yes, please, there's a lady right here in the, in the middle. Microphone's on its way. Hi, um, Alex, first of all, you're just gorgeous. <laughs> um, and I was wondering how many of the books you were going to cram into season one? Two, the first two books. Oh, cool, brilliant. Is that the idea, going forward, two books per season? I don't know, to be honest. I don't mm. know. I, I, I wish we could do one season per book, really, because there's so much in it. I mean, mm. only the part of, of when Uhtred is still a child, I feel well, there's so much... It, 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 there's so much more in the books and, and you want to put it all in and uh, especially having Tom Taylor who plays Uhtred as a kid he's just yeah, such, a, such a brilliant actor yeah. you know he blew us all away but it's just not possible you know yeah. and, and I think uh, I think maybe going back to the very first question uh, uh, from you was it Marion or, yeah uh, Ma sorry Maori. Maori okay um, yeah you know there, there, there's always going to be disappointments there's been debate about the the um, shape of the shields, for example, that the Saxons didn't have the shields that they have in the series, and the reason why we did it that way is so you could tell the armies apart. Uh, you know, th you you always have to have to um, compromise, and and it's it's disappointing for diehard fans, um, and it's sometimes frustrating for you as an actor when you when you want to. You know, when you really want to stick to, to, to little details that, that can mean a lot, and you know it's going to mean a lot to people, but uh, it's just not possible, you know, it's, it's a TV So maybe shot. something you've seen on page 78, something about uh, Utrecht's character that you, you're clinging on to doesn't quite fit the show. Absolutely, and yeah. you have to let go of it, because on the other side of that, there's, there's brilliant new stuff in the show that's not in the books either. And and you get that in exchange. So uh, I think it's it's uh, it's always difficult to watch something when you've loved the books. I, I think you need to you need to watch it as something new and be open to to uh, that in itself in its own s shape and form. You know. How many have read the books here? Quite a few. Oh, fantastic! All Th of them. those are all the guys that hate us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got time for a few last questions. Yes, please. Um, hi, I was just wondering, um, in between takes, um, did you keep in character? How did you, like, did you try method acting as a way of, yeah, of performing? Excuse me, yeah, there's a small clip on Twitter where the Vikings actually play football. <laughs> uh, and we got a message on Twitter, is that uh, a football or is it something else? <laughs> Could it be a head? Uh, but it was not. Uh, did you have another question or 
I can yeah, try to like, answer. Uh, no, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, I was trying to say, I want to say that early on. It's very glamorous, and we're very pleased to be here tonight. Um, acting is very glamorous coming to this part of the job. Um, but actually being out there... I find this part the hardest. No, I, you know, I think this is very glamorous. I know we, <laughs> you know. But anyway, uh, the premiere, the opening. But um, it's a lot of waiting around, you know. And uh, when it's been raining for about two days, it's muddy and you wait and you wait to come on and the light is going and the director shouts, you know, it's five minutes, you have to get on your horse. I mean, it's, but you have to be ready even though we're waiting for 13 hours. So um, staying in character, I don't know. I tend to just relax really. Um, my time is actually, with the other person in front of the camera. I don't think so much about the character. When I'm with uh, uh, Uthred, I'm with um, Alexander. Um, that's my philosophy, and I try to be very much listening uh, into the uh, other person in front of me, instead of focusing on my myself and my own motivations. So, um, yeah. So actually I wait for the moment and I try to be ready when it's time to go in front of the camera. Mm. And David, do you stay in character in between takes? Are you the king on set? <laughs> uh, no, it's but with the, like, the more emotional stuff that you'll c come to later, I suppose it's, it's better to go off by yourself and have some qui quiet time. But I know we, we, we socialise an awful lot together and that really helped, I think. We used to go for a lot of uh, meals together and. But that's a good bonding exercise, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, Alfred has a lot of speeches as well. He has a lot of uh, heavy lifting in terms of his dialogue and, and some of the monologues, as we, as we saw. Uh, how do you prepare for those? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Go on. Mm. But, I don't know. Do you practice them at, do you, in, in, your, in the dressing room or do you practice them in your trailer? Or I've got home? that new, what is it, line learner app, that thing. I used to use that. Sit in the bath and put that on. Oh, that's <laughs> I didn't know there was a line. <laughs> that's a red app. wine. What? I didn't know there was an app for learning yeah. lines. Well, there we go. We all, uh, again, we've learned something. Uh, we've got time for a couple of last questions. Uh, let me see. At this point, no hands go up. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe come to you. There's a gentleman right behind you there. Thank you. Hello. Um, David and Rune, my questions are for you, really. You've talked about how you've researched your characters, because you've both got real life characters. Um, how do you feel, do you feel the pressure of portraying real life characters or do you try and make the characters your own? I think if I went to this job thinking, thinking about it, I think I'd be ter terrified, so. No, no, I think I went to the books and tried to uh, connect as much as I can with that, with that man. But I love the fact that he, he's not the, the man we expect, you know, the image to be, and that really uh, hit hit home with me. That somebody quite frail had this enormous strength in many and different ways. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was a question over here. There's a gentleman over here. If we can get the microphone, and then we'll finish up where we started. One of the things that's quite interesting um, for me is how different the Vikings and the Saxons are in their cultures and the way they think about things and their morals. Um, so how much of their culture do you think still exists today? Are we more Saxon or we, do we have any Viking left in us? What do you think about how we are today? Who wants to begin with that one? <laughs> Here today in Britain, or oh, I can just say a couple of words, because uh, for me it was quite a challenge, because um, the Danes, and o obviously we, we need, uh, needed the, uh, the villains as coming, and there's no question about it, the Danes came and uh, tried to conquer what, it's, uh, what was going to be England. But for me it was also that uh, the Vikings had another side to themselves that I think was like everyday life. And uh, um, I think that was a challenge to try and sort of show that in the, the small, um, yeah, in the scenes we had, so. The, the advantage we had was that we, we had brilliant international casting and all the, the Danes were actually Nordic actors. 
which brought a whole different energy to set than all the British actors. And uh, I think that that gave it a lot because the, the, the British actors were usually uh, um, with a lot of humor, but still contained in a certain way. Whereas the Nordic actors, you would never know what was going to happen next. And you see, Rune, I mean, they, they're, they're all a little bit bonkers. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm terrified. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, we're going to finish off with the uh, where we right, right back where we began with this lady here in the front row. Thank you. Yes, you put. Uh, would, there's a microphone. We'll just here he comes. 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 You know when Ragnar first appeared on the shores of Northumbria, was it health and safety that stopped them from dancing on the oars? <laughs> <laughs> you read the books, didn't you? You have, you, yes, <laughs> yes, I, I read the books. And you have no idea how many things we were not allowed to do because of health and safety and how frustrating that was on set. I um, bet you wanted to do that. <laughs> however, I was not there for that scene, so I can't tell you. Thank you. Varuna was. Sorry. You were there for the same way they'd land on, on, on shore. You, you weren't allowed to dance on the oars. No, but I did it, uh, yeah, sort of when they were not looking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, uh, they, uh, they uh, used to do that. They did a lot of things, and I don't know if all of it is true, but... And they used to drink ale. I don't know if that was they true. They used to sharpen either. their teeth. <laughs> they used to rape. We, we, I don't think we had any rapes on set, did we? Uh, no. No, no. No dancing of oars, no rapes. Mushrooms? No. I think the Vikings were into mushrooms. Yes, we had mushrooms. That's, yeah, I think when they went berserk, you know, the berserkers, I think they had uh, mushrooms. I think they went to that. Wow. Well, we can do that. That's not, we didn't do method acting. Yeah, health and safety would say no to that. Uh, and on that note, that's all the time we have, I'm afraid. Thank you so much for coming. Thank Thanks for your questions. Thank, Thank you, of course. Rune Tempted, David Dawson, Alexander Raymond. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, basically, have you seen first to second, third episodes? Yeah? Good. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Abba is bonkers, uh, but is also a real... Figure. He, he actually existed, as did Alfred the Great, obviously. Uh, did you do a lot of research into your characters before you took this, this on? Let's start with you, Runa, and then and David. I'm, I'm not sure if... I mean, you have characters in, in this time from this history that's called Uber, but I'm not quite sure if uh, he was actually... He had that sort of um, position that he has in The Last Kingdom. And we can discuss this afterwards, but uh, uh, there, there was a Viking called Uber, for sure. And uh, I trained for about six months with real Vikings in Norway. I remember the first uh, fighting session, and I said, okay, let's pretend. And they, they said, we do not pretend. <laughs> so uh, that was very good, six months with them. Uh, fighting a lot with axe, and we didn't have any choreography. So in the end of the six months, we were actually fighting. Um, so that was good preparation. R read a lot uh, from Norse uh, mythology, uh, Hovamol, as uh, some of you might know. Uh, and of course, uh, not of course, but I'm Norwegian, and it's kind of in my DNA to do the Viking stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and David, you play obviously Alfred, who becomes king. Uh, did you work experience kings? Did you go on internship programs with, with monarchs? How did you, how do you research this role? Um, I, thought, I thought it was amazing that it's um, a period of history that we know very little about. We're not really taught about it at school an awful lot. And yet it was this incredible moment when uh, England almost never was and um, that this one man had this incredible vision it, and it's a, an amazing moment in, in history 
Uh, but so I researched like the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles and Brother Asa, who you'll meet soon, uh, wrote an awful lot about Alfred's life. And then the books, I, I really fell in love with the books and always went back to them to really find those little nuance of details about um, who Alfred really was, yeah. And, uh, and Alexander, uh, Uhtred is uh, a, a creation by Bernard Cornwell. So he, did he you do a lot of research? But he's, yeah. he's actually yeah. uh, part of, of Bernard's family. He, he was a, a character who existed about two, uh, two to three hundred years after the story set. So he's a fictional character in the story, yes. So did you do a lot of research? Did you sit down with Bernard Cornwell himself? Well, what, what did you I, do? I had his books, which were all the research I needed handed to me on a silver platter, which <laughs> was brilliant. Got a lot out of the books, and then, you know, of course, I, I also did the, the, the fight training, the horse riding, and, and, uh, and a lot of it came on set as well, because we, we were always shooting on location, and even when we were inside, it was freezing cold, and you can see the breath in many of the scenes. All that is real, so I think I just got a lot from, from being there and being in the moment, you know? Did you have six months of fight training? With Vikings, I, like. I didn't need six months. <laughs> <laughs> he was—he was a bold right, claim. I, he was so fit already, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy did that. <laughs> <laughs> How much training did you do with the fight, with the fight stuff, with the with we, stunts, we, sword we work? Didn't, we didn't actually do that much. I only started one week before we started shooting. One week? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, but true. Yeah, true. Wow. Absolutely. So yeah. did you know it already or was it just Well, I, I, just I I'd done up? lots of different martial arts before but but never never with a heavy sort of <laughs> medieval sword yeah. or pre-medieval sword. Um, so that was new, but I think just the enjoying it so much made it a lot easier, you know. So how did this um, show come about for you all? How did you get involved in the first place? I actually self-taped for it. Um, it sounds like a like a homemade porn, but it's actually when you <laughs> when you uh, put yourself on tape for a casting director who's in a different country, mm -hmm. or when they're too lazy to see people in person, <laughs> <laughs> which was it here? <laughs> which it, it was the different country. I, okay, I was okay. I was at home in the states, and oh. and uh, it was being cast out of the UK. So mm -hmm. I did a couple of self tapes, sent those in, and then I I did a screen test in LA, and then I flew over to London for a final screen test with Emily. And it took quite a while. I think I started in April, and I finally got an answer in, in September. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, Nick Murphy, who directed the first two episodes, and was involved, I think, throughout the whole of the show as well. Oh, heavily. He, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he absolutely set the pace, and um, he came up with the concept of, of, shooting, of shooting almost documentary style. So uh, you're very much in the action all the time, and that was that was uh, mostly, if not all, Nick Murphy's idea, you know. And and uh, and he's certainly the one who got me involved. He's the one who championed me. Yes, he yeah. he said that um, he tweeted actually that he knew the second you walked into the room. I'm very grateful to him. Do you know the second you walk into the room that he knew the second you walked into? There the was room? no room. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a tape, just a tape. Okay. Uh, and David, how did you get involved? Um, for me, it was one of those, th very rarely um, do you read a script when a character really, really um, sings out to you. And with Alfred, I knew that I'd fight tooth and nail to, to play this man. Because I think as an actor, you, um, a lot of the stories you're involved with, it's a kind of a relationship-based or family-based or uh, the main problems or objectives are to do with the town or a community. And this man, his main objective is to unite a kingdom and create England. And I found that incred incredible. And so I, I met Nick and Chrissy about three, three times. Okay. Yeah. Is that nerve wracking for an actor as you go through auditions and you, you have one meeting, then you have a second meeting, you think, oh, I could get this. And then the third meeting comes around. At that point, what, what are the nerves like? Are they? Yeah, it's hard because you want it more and more yeah. as it goes along, yeah. But you get it, which is good. And uh, and Runa, how did you get involved? I uh, also did a self tape, uh, and um, it's quite funny because um, in Norway, a lot of people say, "Oh yes, Runa, 
I used to have a big beard like this, and I said, oh, really, that's fantastic, you're perfect. You were perfect for this role. And I said, yes, but actually when I did uh, the casting, I didn't have, any, I didn't have a beard as well, uh, at all. That's quite funny, because uh, Nick, he didn't say, he said the same thing to me, actually. He knew it was me the, f the minute he saw me on the, on the tape. Um, and um, it was good, and then I read the script, I love the script. I think that's one of the reasons I became an actor, is to tell stories. And I think this is a fantastic story to be told. And I think in the way it's being told is just amazing. So um, it's very well written. And that from there on, it was just try to do my best. And I had to wait about, I think, one and a half months from my first self-tape to the second because the first was really trying to be a bad guy, and then feedback was, oh yes, that's really good, but now we want to see if this character can have some humor. <laughs> and Rune has no humor. Exactly. <laughs> so so another six months of training on that. <laughs> exactly, so I thought, that's gonna be hard. So I, I knew I had a great chance to get the part, but it took, uh, yeah, you took, took a while and afterwards I learned that actually Nick Murphy he went on holiday so while I was sort of you know so nervous for that time he was actually somewhere having fun in the sun <laughs> you know when when I first met Runa it was uh, it was at the, uh, the costume department in London and I walked into the room and I saw Runa in his boxer shorts <laughs> and, and a Viking top and he was towering over me with his big beard and his blonde hair and he looked so perfect for this part and Thank then you. yeah oh it, it, I'll never forget that moment it's quite emotional <laughs> I talk about it with my girlfriend at night and she's shut up about it but, but uh, suddenly this uh, realization came into my head that I was going to have to fight him <laughs> in the middle of the uh, <laughs> show and that was less funny. But Did that take more than a week's training to prepare for <laughs> the fight? Because you are on a collision course, we won't give anything away, but that, that will happen at some point. The two of you will fight. Maybe tonight. Oh, maybe tonight. <laughs> maybe right here on this stage. Um, we have a clip now from the show. We have a couple of clips, actually. Uh, and this one is uh, a scene which shows Alfred and Utrecht uh, having a bit of a discussion. Let's take a look. Well, maybe not so much of a discussion, more of a monologue, but, <laughs> but, but nevertheless, the, the relationship between uh, uh, Alfred and Utrecht is very, very important. It's, it's the, the core, the heart of the show, wouldn't you say? Is that something that you, you, you agree with? Yeah, it was described to us when I got it as a bit of a, bit of a love story, really. Not, not broke back style, but yeah. <laughs> well, it could be, you never know. Uh, no, um, yeah, it's the story of these two men and that they need each other uh, desperately to um, get their own objectives. And yet at the same time, at least at the beginning, they can't stand each other. And um, I can't wait for you to see how that relationship deepens and, and develops between the two men, I think. It's the opposite attract thing. Alfred is very analytical and uh, he's an intellectual. And Utrecht is the complete opposite. He's a man of, of action, a man of impulse. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Uhtred is very fascinated by Alfred because of, of the way he thinks and how out of the box he is. And, and I think at that time it was very unusual to have a king who was not a fighter. Not that, that Alfred didn't fight at all, but, but he was mainly a, a politician, a strategist. And for Uhtred that, that was completely unheard of. And that first meeting when Uhtred first meets Alfred, he's, he's not really impressed by him just because of his, his physicality and, and, and demeanor and the, the, the frailty. And in one scene, Alfred just kills Uhtred and completely shuts him up. And I think that sets the pace. And, and for me as an actor, it really helped to, uh, to have David play Alfred because David is such a, a, a detailed, um, brilliant actor who who knows his stuff so well that you, you know you'll always be safe and you can, you can try out stuff and you know he'll be there to, to bounce back at you and, and 
to be able to admire him as, as a person and as an actor really helped me um, to to admire Alfred in the story. Mm. Yeah. Was there a, a long rehearsal process? I mean, you had a week uh, to learn fights, fighting, and and swords, the swords play. But in terms of your relationship with. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, the BBC's The Last Kingdom is a rollicking historical drama based on novels by Bernard Cornwell, which follows one young man, Utrecht, as he is torn between a, a war between the Saxons and the Danes at the birth of what would become England. Uh, now let's meet some of the stars of the show. Will you please welcome Runa Temte. <laughs> David Dawson. And Alexander Draymon. Welcome, gents. Hello. How are we all? Very well. Good. 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 Uh, has everyone here been watching The Last Kingdom? Okay. Good, good, good. Good to know. Uh, because we're on episode three in this country, episode five in the States, it can be a little bit confusing at times just to keep track of where we are. But just in case anyone hasn't seen it, and for anyone who's listening to the podcast who hasn't seen the show, can you talk about your characters, who you play? Let's start with you, Alexander. Right. I play Utrid, Utrid of Bourbon Burr sometimes known as Uhtred Ragnarsson, who, <laughs> who uh, is born a Saxon, gets raised as a Dane after he's orphaned by the Danes, and eventually becomes the leader of <laughs> Alfred's armies. Fair enough. And Alfred is played by David. Who is Alfred? David? Hello. Hello. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, yeah, I play King Alfred. Um, who is uh, the physically frail but fiercely intelligent uh, weirdo who ends up with this vision of uh, trying to create England. And uh, Aruna, who do you play? Yes, I play uh, Abba, or Uba. I'm the main warrior, the chieftain. Uh, I'm sort of the leader of the gang coming over for Denmark. And the owner of a taxi company. <laughs> yeah. Anyone seen my tattoo? What is it? Yes? It's actually a combination of a snake and maybe a small dragon, is it? Something like that. Cool. So uh, we do some fighting. That's my job, actually. And uh, <laughs> it's a cool job. Is that what the character was described as when you first heard about the character and said it's no. just a man who fights. No, when I first read the script, it said this character is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> and I said, that, that's good. I have to make him into a uh, um, sort of more three-dimensional dim character. And I think that was the big challenge because, you know, villains often they go in one direction, either you die or you do not die. So, yeah, I think it was great and... Uh, 